Hey guys, it's May 11th, 2022. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and we have lots of new stuff for you today. We are going to be introducing our free Halloween uh, stitch along. It does have a quilt along also, but today we're just gonna be talking about the stitch along. That will be coming up in the summer. I'm gonna show you lots of mania pieces that I've been working on and Cheryl's been working on. I have some whips. I have some finished framed pieces and lots of new stuff. So we'll jump right in. I'm gonna start off with this item. This is our Mystery Boo Crew Stitch Along. This will begin in the summer. We don't have exact dates yet. Um, this is a free quilt and cross stitch pattern and video series. Um, this time we called it the Boo Crew Mystery Quilt and Stitch Along to celebrate Halloween. And we're gonna talk a little bit about it. This will have a finishing video for the cross stitch and the quilt will have free videos throughout. And again, it's gonna be completely free. It is a four or five part series and will not be coming out until the summer. And I wanted to kind of show you some different options. So for now, on our website, you can download the supply list right now. The stitch count is 70 by 200. And if you stitch on 14 count Ada, it will finish at five inches by 14 and a half. And this is um, pumpkin vintage trim by Lori Holt. And this is a wall decor and the skew is on here from Hobby Lobby. So we are offering a couple of things. So for the fabric, our sample was stitched on Peaceful Purple by Witchell. And you can see it's this. So this is, a, this is just a fabric. It doesn't have modeling. It's just a solid fabric and purple. So that's what it calls for. We have two different thread packs. One is Classic Color Works and one is DMC, so you have the option. Um, our sample was stitched by Cheryl and it was stitched with Classic Color Works. And we wanted to do something a little bit different this year and bring in more color. And I am not a fan of purple, so I still wanted to participate. So if you're not a fan of purple, I am using the, um, let's see. Spooky Hollow Light by Fabric Flare. And I'm also using 14 count. And the only, so I'm only changing two things, the fabric, and there's only one purple used. So instead of that purple, I just bought an extra skein of Colonial Copper. And so I, and that's already in the thread pack. I just, you know, you're gonna need more for the letters. So if you wanna do it like mine, you would use Spooky Hollow Light get the thread pack and then just order one extra colonial copper. If you want to do it like the sample, you would buy Peaceful Purple Witchell 14 count, download your supply list and get either one of the um, thread packs. And we think it looks really cute with this pumpkin enamel needle minder. I'm going to store everything for mine in the Mad for Plaid bag in the charcoal color and um, We'll just kind of pop everything in there. And also this, we put on here the little spooky uh, charm that we have. So, um, as the mystery quilt along creeps closer, we will keep you updated through email, social media, and the blog. And of course, both live streams will be going over it. Um, if y'all have any questions, just let me know. This is a peek at um, part one and remember it's called Boo Crew and um, I think you're gonna really like it and what we do on this series is like one year we'll do Halloween one year we'll do fall one year we do Halloween so we kind of change it up and we wanted to get really fun with the colors so um, we went with purple so that is our new mystery it's gonna be coming out again in the summer and I'm going to kind of go into Mania now. And we have been talking about Mania for a while. And I'm just going to show you each of the pieces that I'm working on. 
So the first one that I worked on is Cut Press Sew by Lori Holt. And this one is so much fun. It's only taking me like an hour and a half to do each section. So this was part one. And then this is part two. But it was just, I just was like, I've only spent an hour. I want to keep going. So what I decided to do was, because um, it's going to be four parts. These are going to be the next two days. But what I decided to do was go ahead and outline. And then it makes it really easy. As you use a color here, you can just fill in the inner part of your spool. And then that way, when you do the outer part, you can travel with your threads because it will go behind your colors, if that makes sense. So like when I do the dark um, spool, I can do the top. And then when I travel to do the bottom, I will not be going um, behind white. I'll be going behind a colored thread. And this one is so cute and so fun. I can't wait to get this one framed. Um, we did put the link to Amazon um, where we got that frame and it's listed on the back of the pattern. Um, and we just, um, sh Lori just painted it with one of her paints and super cute. And doing something like this is really fun because it's so, um, I don't know it's just it's really fun because you're getting a lot done with very little time so this one's been a lot of fun I cannot wait to finish this one and get this one hung up in my sewing room so that I've only I spent about an hour and 20 minutes on this part and then the rest it took me a little bit over an hour and a half so really quick stitch the next one that I worked on is by Bent Creek the next one that I worked on is by Heart and Hand. It's called Doodles Summer. And um, I already did the spring. And I'm going to also do the winter and fall. So this one, I am stitching on 25 Count Lugana, the color oatmeal. And I'm stitching on the mottled side. And for Mania, I'm putting this into three different sections. So this will be the next section and then the third section. And, and we're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you one little change that I made. And this only took me about two hours, a little bit over two hours. So the change I made is right here, these are supposed to be French knots and they were just not looking good so what i did is i just did a back stitches and then i did a half cross stitch can we zoom in a little bit more so instead of going over two i went over one square and just did a cross stitch there because i could not get my french knots to look good so that's always an option if you're working with a over two piece like a linen or um Lugana or even weave you can just do a little small X instead of so that's something that I'm going to consider for the future is doing little tiny X's instead of um, French knots and then I'll do the same thing over here so over here I'll probably do the same thing if there are French knots I'll do the same thing so really fun and I'm, I'm really loving the the fabric it's oatmeal 25 count I'm not changing any of the colors and um, I, I, I really enjoy mania because I like my small projects the next project I'm working on is called summer home it is our fat quarter shop exclusive mania and this one only took me an hour this week So this was part two. Part one was the border, and that took me almost four hours. This took an hour. And then the bottom, there's gonna be three more sections. So if you haven't joined this yet, you would buy the PDF from us, and you would get parts one and two. And then each Friday throughout May, you will get in the morning parts um, three, four, and five. And I think these will pro this will probably take me four or five hours to do the next part. I kind of peeked at what it was this morning. The fabric is thin white pine board by Fabric Flare, and I'm using 14 count. 
and um, we do have a pop-up of the the mystery kind of divided out um, the bottom just so you can kind of peek at it the bottom is going to be three sections if you wanted to see that just as like a little teaser so I got that done on Friday and then the next two are by Summer House Stitch Works. I'm working on Spring and Winter Awakens. Well, Spring Awakens is the first one. And these, this is three different DMC colors. And the model that you see here was stitched on 40 count. So I only bought one of each DMC color. But since I'm using 14 count, I'm obviously going to run out and I didn't think about that before so I have to buy one more skein of each and um, this is my first time working with fiber on a whim which is hand dyed fabric and I love the color this is espresso and um, I do love the color we're gonna zoom into my stitches so you can see I don't feel like my stitches like if you look at home sweet home I'll show you the difference well, first with this, it's it's more movable because it's hand dyed, right? So it, it moves around more. If you look at something that's just a straight Ada, it's not gonna move. See how, this watch. So it's like quilting fabric. This moves around less. So if you are looking at my stitches, these stitches look really nice compared to these. But once I get it framed, I don't think it's going to matter. I think it will be totally fine. Um, so I would say it's taking me a little bit longer. It's harder to get the um, fabric to just stay in your hand, like I said, because it's, um, you know, it's, it's much softer. Now, I did kind of cheat and go on, and the reason why is I was at a basketball game and I forgot to bring something else, so uh, I just kept going. And um, I'm going to do a little video of doing part two and you can just kind of see in that video which um, I'm going to do it as a reel that we put on Instagram and you'll kind of see which direction I go so I would say my review of hand dyed is it's really awesome I just have to get used to it I, I will say I love the color really happy with the color I just have to figure out how to get it to I guess stabilize in my hand a little bit better than what I'm doing right now and I was just a little bit saddened by my stitches not being as perfect. But like I said, once I get it framed, it should be totally fine. So this is Spring Awakens. And then the next one is Winter Cometh. And the same thing, three DMC colors. And I just didn't think ahead to buy two, so, so I need to do that. And this one, I loved stitching because it's so very much like quilting so it's like flying geese star blocks 25 patch um love this one and i do like that both have different borders so um if i show you the other one i was kind of thinking oh you know they're the same series so they probably have the same border and they don't so it it was really fun because i was thinking oh i'll probably be stitching you know the same thing twice and i'm not and I, I love the size of it. Now, remember the sample that um, Summer House Stitch Works used was 40 count, so hers is much smaller. Um, but these are really fun. So that's my mania. And I'm going to show you now Cheryl's mania. And Cheryl is stitching a new project each starting each Monday in May. And last week we showed you this. This is the day, is the name of the pattern. The designer is Plum Street Samplers, and she's using 36 count Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit. Um, she's using the called for floss, flosses, and since it's 36 count, she's using one strand of floss and going over two squares. We're gonna zoom in so you can see it. Um, you can see the one strand and the going over two squares now last week I showed this to you but she had only kind of started here so she got all of this done this week so she might be able to she might be able to finish this during mania we'll see 
So again, and this pattern is sold out. We are trying to get more. We're just waiting for our shipment to come in. And then the next one is ABC by Primrose Cottage Stitchers. And this one, she was going to stitch on a different count, but she decided 32 count, um, she was gonna do 32 count, but it was just coming out too small. So she switched this to a 27 count Linda cloth, which is an even weave. And she used the called for DMC. And it's, so I've seen some comments in YouTube sometimes, and they say, there's nobody who can stitch this fast when talking about me. She started this on Monday and it's completely done. So you can stitch, you just have to be disciplined, I guess. Um, but I love this one, it makes me wanna stitch it. Um, I'm, I'll be interested to see how she finishes it. But again, Primrose Cottage Stitchers, and it's called A, B, C. And then next week I'll, um, I'll show you probably progress on this is the day and then whatever she starts next week. And then, so that's my mania, but now I'm gonna show you just some whips and different things I'm working on. So I worked on flea market baskets and I stitched about three and a half hours on it. And like I said last week, I really just cannot put it down. So what I did is, this is the basket of five. So I stitched this. And then yesterday and last night, I stitched um, all of this gingham. Once I stitched the gingham, I stitched this outer piece. And then what I decided I'm going to do is this week, I'm gonna stitch the sixth basket. I'm going to stitch all the gingham to right here. And then the next week, I will do the gingham but then going forward, as I stitch a basket, when I use the orange, I will, once I have this, because I do want to have the base of the dark brown first. So I'm going to, I guess my goal is going to be to finish the gingham, because I love it, finish the dark brown. But then if I'm stitching a basket, it's not much work. So I'm going to stitch the basket while I have the thread out stitch of flower. So the pink, I, it's over here, so I didn't have anything to go against. But as that's kind of going to be my goal so that I can um, keep stitching the flowers. And then I might be able to finish this in the summer, just finish it super early. Um, I just don't like putting it down, and I feel like I'm just wasting time if I just spend like 30 minutes on something. Like once I get it out, I want to like really spend time on it. I don't want to like just rush and get it done. Um, or like rush and put it away. I just want to keep stitching. So um, this only took me like three and a half hours to do all of this. What I do is I do the medium color first and I did the medium color all the way down. And then I filled in the white and kind of what I did is I went all the way from here all the way down. And then I just did the white all the way down if that makes sense and then did the darker color and then this is how it looks on the back so this one's going to be really awesome i'm loving this one and then oh my gosh i have never procrastinated so much in my life i finished this i finished part four yesterday finally so we're in may so i'm 11 days behind but i got this part done it took longer than i thought I um I felt like when I did the letters, like maybe I didn't do the best job, but I think they're okay. I'm kind of thinking about taking them out and redoing it. Now this one, because I think I'm gonna let this one rest a couple of weeks, and then this is gonna be this needs to be done for May. But if I end up with not enough time, then I'm just gonna start up here in June. We'll just see. Um, it just takes so much time and um, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. It's just, um, I want to give it the credit. Like I want to take my time with it and to be able to take my time with it, it just takes, like I don't want to rush it if that makes sense. 
So I'd rather give it a break so that I can do it, you know, accurately. And when I go across, I'll kind of start at the bottom, the top, and then just kind of fill in. So now that I've shown you all of that, I'm going to answer any questions you guys have um, before I move on to more. Margaret asked, is there any chance you might stock the Fabric Flare Spooky Hollow in 16 count? Yes, we can write that down and order that um, today. BCG Floss Tube, does anyone start their hand dyed to get the stiffness back? That's a great question. I haven't done that, um, but definitely if anybody has, that'd be great. I'd be afraid that the flake, that it would kind of flake off. Diana Good, I just started getting back into cross stitch and I'm wondering what others are using to help magnify while stitching and does anyone use a neck light? I hope it's okay to ask this. So I'll show you what I use. It is right over here. So I use the Halo Go at work. Thank you. This is the Halo Go. It has three lights, three different temperatures or two different temperatures. So off, bright, and then this is a magnifier that you look through. So I use this, I have like five of these. So I use this in the car, at work, and then if I need to like, um, I'll take it in places. But then by my chair, I bought a, um, it's called, I don't know what it's called, magnifier four or something like that. I'm trying to think of what it's called, but I use a magnifier that we sell that clips to a table and goes across. So I think light is always great. Any kind of light you can get and any kind of magnifier you can get. Um, Omega 3.0 magnifier. Omega 3.5 magnifier, that's what I use. Um, Peggy says she's going to be using hand dyed floss for the first time. I've heard you say on floss tubes that we would stitch one X at a time. Will you show us how it's done? I'm looking for guidance. I think we have a video on this channel that Cheryl did that shows you that. So I would just Google, it's probably three years old, maybe find that video. We can try to find it, find it for you and put it in the comments. But your goal when you're using hand dyed is when you pull it out of the skein, you keep the strands together. So because it's variegated so like this might be lighter and this might be darker so when you pull the strands off pull two strands off keep them together though the way they came and then you just stitch and it'll give it more of a variegated look oh gourmet law wants to sh me to show the back of cheryl's piece when she uses hand dyed floss and stitching one x at a time i like the look in the front but want to see the back So this is how Cheryl's backs always look, whether she's using DMC. She doesn't ever use the loop method, I don't think. So even when she does like DMC that's not variegated, I don't think she uses the loop method. I'll show you the back of her uh, ABC, but I don't think she uses the loop method ever. Um, so this is the back of hers. And then we'll show the back of one of mine because they, they're similar. Yeah, they're... To me, they're similar. So those are the back of a couple of pieces. And um, this one for sure is hand dyed. The others are not, but um, that's how it looks. Diana says, thank you for the replies. One more question. I use a Q-snap eight by eight, but what does everyone use when stitching larger projects? I have a wooden scroll, scroll frame for needlepoint, but the sides don't get very tight. So I can answer for Cheryl who um, does stitch. She uses a five inch or eight inch. She doesn't go any larger. Um, she prefers to keep it kind of smaller so that I can answer for Cheryl. I stitch in hand, so I don't use one. Except on Nutcracker Village, I do use the 5-inch Morgan hoop. 
Uh, Angela asks if it matters if you have the right needle size. Yes, absolutely. So I have a little cheat sheet that I can read because I messed it up. But if you're using like a 10 or 11 count, use a size 24 needle. If you're using 14 count or 16 count, size 26 needle. And if you're using an 18, 20, 36, 40 count, use a size 28. So a size 28 needle is really tiny. You would use that when you're working with really tiny holes. A size 24, 26 is a medium needle, so you would use that on like 14, 16 count. And a size 24 or size 22 are really fat needles, and you would use that when you have bigger holes. Susan asks if you can switch a pattern from 28 count to 14 count, or does it distort the pattern? No, 28 count is basically the same as 14 count, except you're stitching over two squares, so it's exactly the same. And just like I showed you with the summer house stitch work patterns that I'm doing, she had that stitch on 40 count, and I'm stitching it on 14 count. And so all the time people stitch different things. Now, if you're doing something gigantic, that's when it really makes a difference because you might not be able to buy a cloth that big. But people convert all the time. Have I ever used the jug of starch? I have not on cross stitch. I haven't used starch on anything unless I have like a, like a crease that I can't get out. Would I consider carrying DMC Floche? I have no idea what that is. Um, so I'm not sure because I haven't heard of it. Do you have the fabric recommendations for Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow? Okay, email Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L at fatquartershop.com. We did buy the fabric, but we needed to buy it in a bigger cut for it to fit. So that is on, I know it's on its way to us, and um, but Cheryl has all the information. The gingham bunnies are adorable. Where did you find them? Hobby Lobby. I'm just now looking at them. Yeah, Hobby Lobby. What is my favorite cloth and count to work on other than Ada? Okay, 25 count Lugana for sure. And I like the oatmeal and I also like shadow and I also like cloud. So those are the three colors I use. Maya Heath asks, did I do three stitches from the fence border for fall on the farm between the charts? Okay, so on that one, I don't remember exactly, but but um, I haven't answered the second part, but the first part I did whatever was called for on the Little House Needleworks website. So whatever that said to do is what I did. Do I ever have issues with my thread getting pinched at the top of the bow and needle? Yes, and what I would do is just uh, clip it and then um, just thread it instead of folding it over and trying to thread it. Does Piggy go to work with me? No, he doesn't. Would I recommend one or two strands on 18 count? You're supposed to do one. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to show you a bunch of framed finishes and all of these are framed by Priscilla from uh, Stitching with the Housewives. So big, huge thank you to Priscilla for doing all of these. And it's so amazing how much uh, her and I are getting done this year. So most of these are Stitching with the Housewife patterns and I'm gonna show all of them to you now. So the first one I'm gonna show you is Roses Are Red by Stitching with the Housewives. So this was stitched by me on Chalkboard Black 14 Count Ada. I use the Call for Classic Color Works. The number of this SKU that she finished it on is Hobby Lobby 5596903. This fabric right here is Chelsea's Checks in red, and this is Priscilla's Pretty Plaids in red. And um, we do now have all of the Priscilla and Chelsea Stitching with the Housewives fabrics in stock at Fat Quarter Shop. Some had sold out, but they're all back in stock now. And then here, this has like a, a scroll at the top and she glued, it's a felt rose with a ribbon that she put together. So it's so pretty. So that's the first one. 
The next two are both dapper doodads. This one is to the moon and back. And this one is both of these that I'm about to show you are finished on a Hobby Lobby SKU 207-1595. And some of these um, you cannot find online. We tried to search, but I'm still gonna give you the numbers. The next one is Lots of Love. So both of these are finished on the same piece. And this right here is, um, it's a frame and what she did was she put Chelsea's Checks fabric directly on a sticky board and then she stuck that in there and then this one has batting. So she doesn't put batting on the back piece, only on the fabric. And I think she only puts batting on mine. I don't think she puts batting on hers. And then these are fabric covered buttons using the same uh, Chelsea's Checks fabric. And then the next couple are gonna be tear tray tidbits. Uh, cook, co cookies and coffee comes with this pattern and a bonus pattern. So I'm gonna show you both of those. And these are finished on wooden blocks from Stitch Etc. And the wooden blocks are um, in their Facebook group. So you have to buy them there and it's just Stitch ETC and you can just look that up on Facebook and um, she did the same felt rows with the same ribbon and they're solid wood blocks I'm just going to show you so this one's black and all of these are stitched on Witchell chalkboard black and I love these because these can just sit um, I don't have to worry about them tipping over or anything they'll just sit right on my um, tear tray that I have so these two come in the same pattern. The next one is Key to My Heart, and all of these patterns came out in January, February of this year, and they're all available as PDFs. This one um, is also on a Stitch Etc. board. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. These are going to look so good. I just want to go home now and just decorate my house for Valentine's Day. So my kids can make fun of me. So those, uh, the first ones were from Hobby Lobby. The second were from Stitch, etc. And then uh, this is Be My Valentine. And these are finished on um, Michael's, Michael's blocks. With, they both have this red gingham on the side. You can find them in the uh, little seasonal section of Michael's. And the SKU number is 654504. Same ribbon and same little rows. And then Valentine Lane. And this fabric right here is the Aqua Chelsea's Checks. And I think it's one of her newer colors. These look so cute next to each other. So those are my valentine's day pieces now some of my valentine's pieces i took to the framer and i'm going to show you a picture of that in a bit um for easter i just stitched this this is called in my easter bonnet it's a dapper doodad and this one oh my gosh it's so cute so this is a black and white ribbon this is a frame from hobby lobby the SKU number is 5523352, and a Priscilla told me she found this in the 4th of July section. This is a Chelsea's Checks. Um, again, the pattern is in my Easter bonnet, and on this one, I didn't change any of the colors. I just added uh, really tealy to the eyes, which does kind of get lost. Um, so that's the only difference between mine and theirs. And it'll it'll sit up too, just like that. And then I have three calendar crates to show you. I'm going to be, sh and these are all designed by Priscilla and Chelsea, and each one of these have a large piece and a small piece. And I'm going to be showing you February, March, and May. All of them were stitched on chalkboard black by Witchell. 
All of them are stitched with the called for classic color works. So this is the large February calendar crates. And then this is the small February calendar crates. And so this will just hang from here. So that's February. This is a Priscilla's Pretty Plaids, and these two are Chelsea's Checks. So the Priscilla's Pretty Plaids are the larger, the Chelsea's Checks are smaller. The March Calendar Crates. This one I think was the easiest one to stitch, and this one is um, the same thing. Priscilla's Pretty Plaids and Chelsea's Checks, and this is actually the fabric that sold out from the new ones uh, first, but they're back in stock. And then this is Bloom, the little, um, the one that can hang down from here. And then May, you'll see April soon. Um, I just stitched out of order, probably because this is like very quilty and so I love it. And so uh, once I get the very last one back and I show all 12 at one time to you, um, that I think that make a really cute reel. Um, I am gonna take this home and actually hang it up and actually enjoy it. And then I have one more that she framed. This is Farm Life. And it's an It's So Emma pattern. And Priscilla finished it for me on the same exact board that she used um, for the finishing for uh, our cover. And the difference is this is 16 count and this is 14 count. And so you can see how much bigger the 14 count uh, is. I just wanted mine to be bigger. So it does look very different. And the sample was stitched 1x at a time using um, color and cotton. And mine, I also used color and cotton and mine just came out a little bit different. So I wanted to show you some photos. I just went to the framer on Saturday and I took eight pieces to the framer. So um, if you see in the top right, that is stitchography and I had framed it in a navy frame. So I took it into her and asked her to find the same exact brand of frame and the same exact frame and just so I can frame the quiltography and then the mini one. So I picked pink for the quiltography and then red for the little circle. So I'm gonna kind of put all those three together and then at the top, those are two Stitching with the Housewives pieces. And I just feel so bad sending all this stuff to Priscilla. So I had, I'm had i going to have two of them framed. And I decided both of those I would frame with the same frame. So I picked like a, like a, not a tiny frame, but like a smaller white frame. And then for the um, patriotic, holiday hallmarks i really wanted more of a rustic feel but that was like the most rustic frame i could find so i don't like love love that one but um i do think it will match all of mine it's so funny you can see the shadow of me taking the photo and then i had three also from the uh, be mine stitch along that we did in february i had three patterns by heart and hand well, two patterns by Heart and Hand, and then one pattern from Silver Creek. And this frame, it's got gold in it, which is totally not my style, but from far away, you can't tell. And it's pretty thin, so I decided I would just frame all three in that frame. And then I think that might be all of the pictures. Oh, okay, so here's just up close the frames that I chose. Just so you can see up close. And then I put a couple pictures of Piggy. So this is Piggy. Um, I showed you all those bags last week. And so I thought, oh, I'm gonna put Piggy in a bag. And my kids were like, he is not gonna fit in that bag. He is too fat. And I was like, no, he's gonna fit, he's gonna fit. So they tried it 
and he did not fit and they came and they were like mom he does not fit in the bag and I was like oh we're gonna make him fit so I folded the bag over and it's, you can tell he doesn't fit but he doesn't fit in the bag and then this is where he sits this is like his little couch and he just sits and snuggles there so I just thought oh I'd show y'all some pictures of piggy and then um um, Kevin wanted me to tell you guys that there's 2,500 items on sale now and so that um, he's getting rid of a ton of old yardage and then we'll be doing kind of the same thing with more things uh, in a couple of weeks. And next week we are going to be having a live trunk show um, and we would love for you to guess who the guest is going to be. Um, so next week for Mania, you won't see my project, um, you won't see my progress in the video, but you can see it daily on social media. And I'm going to answer any questions you guys have, so just pop them in so I can answer the questions, and then I'll show you some new items that we've gotten also. Anita asks, will I be getting the newest patterns from Kathy Haberman? Yes, and those should be on the Coming Soon page. Uh, is picture this plus as stiff as Ada? So picture this plus, those are Ada fabrics, but it is not as stiff as Witchell or as fabric flare because it's been um, dyed, so it softens up. So just to confirm, fabric flare is Ada, it is soft. Sorry, not fabric flare, fiber on a whim. How many inches of fabric do you recommend around the outside? two to three inches, and we have a fabric calculator on fatquartershop.com that can help you uh, determine what size to cut your fabric. Questions for Kimberly or Cheryl. Do you think that 14 count Ada Vintage Country Mocha would look good for home is where the wreath is? Yes, I do. And in the Facebook group from Priscilla and Chelsea Stitching with Housewives, there are several people who have stitched on um, different colors so that would be great to look at am I going to stitch the card cottage garden set no I don't have that planned Glenna asks what would I or Cheryl suggest as an even weave to use for stitching this is the day I would email Cheryl I don't know I would think that the 25 count Logano would look pretty could I recommend a needle threader for cross stitch floss? I don't use one. I'm not sure if I could recommend one. I think that pulling it through might give your cross stitch floss some crinkles or it might mess with the texture. So I would be a little bit hesitant to do it. DMC Floche is a single stranded thread equivalent to two DMC threads. It would depend if we carried that, if we would have to probably get a lot of requests and I'm not sure if our distributors sell it. What are my thoughts on Linda cloth? Will you be getting it in the shop? We do have a lot of it in the shop and we've ordered more colors. I'm not sure if those have come in, but I do know that if there's any specific one you want, just email me and we can order it, but we do have a lot of colors on order. Do I think Boo Crew would look good on fabric flare cobweb? No, it will not pop out enough. We actually tried that before we stitched it and that will not look good. The design, what is in the design will not pop out on that fabric. It seems like I stitch like Lori. My top stitch is bottom left to top right. Is that okay? Yes. So. All that matters in your cross stitch is if all of your stitches go the same direction. So you can stitch any way um, you like. Um, and now, I'm, if you have any questions, throw them in. And um, I'm going to show you some new stuff we got. We got a lot of new stuff. So I wanted to show you this. You're going to be the first to get a peek at the actual product. So this is coming in any day. We're expecting it. We're hoping early next week. It is the Daisy Be In My Bonnet Enamel Needle Minder, and it is so awesome. Um, and this is the Daisy color, and we will have this in future colors. So if you have any colors you would like to recommend to Lori, just type it in there, and she will look at your um, recommendations. And this is really, this is the cutest enamel needle minder we've ever made. 
The next three patterns that are new are by Stitching with the Housewives. And if you pre-ordered these from us, they have shipped. We have Hello America, which is part of their All Jarred Up series. Proud to be an American, which is part of their Back of the Truck series. And then Berry Bakery, which is part of their Up on a Pedestal series. And these are paper patterns, so if you ordered them, they have shipped. The next two patterns from Stitching with the Housewives, this came out last Friday, Strawberry Farm. This is a PDF. And then Happy Birthday America came out this morning. And both of these pieces are by 141 Design Company. Just remember they come, if you buy them from her, they come wooden. You have to paint them. I wanted to show you that Lagoon is a brand new color from Fiber on a Whim. I love it. It's a brand new color from Needlework Market. So I'm gonna show them to you in the different counts just cause it does take the dye differently. So this is 14 count, 16 count. So those are Ada. This is 28 count Cashel Linen, 32 count Belfast Linen, 36 count Edinburgh, and 40 Newcastle. So I'm definitely gonna stitch something on the 14 count eventually. But I love this, it's so pretty. This is like the perfect aqua. So we now have that in stock. And then also from Fiber on a Whim, we have some colors that we've had before, we just have some new counts. So this is the Milk and Honey. That's how it really looks. The, the camera's doing something weird to it. But this is 40 count and 32 count. So we had a request for those. The color stream we now have in 16 count. The color night sky we also have in 16 count. So this is more of a grayish black and this is more of a denim. We also received a lot of new patterns. Uh, the Prairie Schooler, this is Santa's Revisited, I think that's 10, X is 10, and it's 2007, 2010, and 2017 of the Santas. And on Prairie Schooler, um, those are now distributed by Hoffman Distributing, and just so you know, they'll bring some in, they'll take them out of print, bring them back into print, so sometimes you can find them and sometimes you can't, and that is why. Tiny Modernist has some new patterns. Uh, this is part of uh, a series, and this is Mouse's Beach Outing. This is also part of the Happy Alphabet series. This is part five, M, N, and O. So this is part one, part two, three, four, five. And then this is a standalone pattern called Summer Wreath. And it says, Hello Summer. Waxing Moon Designs is known for their little patterns, and this is their summer series, and it has six different animals. Shannon Christine has one new pattern. It's called Summer Goodies. And then we have a new designer. Her name is Erin Elizabeth Designs. So we have Noelle. Happy Halloween. You are the pumpkin to my spice. I guess it's called, yeah, pumpkin to my spice. And then wild at heart. And I think this wild at heart, I think um, is really cute. I think Emma would love that. I think if I made it, she might actually put it up in her room. So I might have to consider that. Scattered Seed Samplers has two brand new patterns. Cotton Tail and Company and Home Sweet Home Pin Keep. So that's our what's new, and then I'm gonna answer questions. So um, 
Can I open up the night sky fabric? Yes. We'll zoom out a little bit. And you know what? I'll open the, the aqua also just on 14 count so people can see it. I didn't even think about that. And I'm being selfish because I'm opening the 14 count because I want to see it. Because <laughs> I know people are probably like, why is she opening 14 count? Okay, so there's a couple of questions in here. Sean asks, I have to say thank you for teaching us how to thread the needle by folding it over and pinching. I'm pinching. I'm so quick now. That's so funny. That reminds me of Kevin. So when we go to basketball games, he's like, I just, he always will say, I don't know how you thread the needle. I don't know how you do that. And I'm like, oh, look. And he's just like, I don't know how you do that. And then he finally stopped asking me. Um, Sharon asks, when using a high count Ada cloth or even weave, do you count the first square where you come up the fabric and then over two, or how do you count it? I've never used before. So um, you would count over two and you start with that bottom left square. And we do have a video and it's um, how to stitch over two. And Cheryl did that video, so that might help you. Anne asks, how do you respond to people who ask you to teach them how to stitch? I stitch to relax and don't want to show the six-year-old I was sitting next to on the plane. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um, if anybody ever asked me how to stitch, I would definitely show them. I, one time at a basketball game, showed these little girls and like, I messed up my whole cross stitch, but it was so much fun. I wish my kids had an interest. They don't at all. It's so sad. Um, but I would definitely show anybody how to stitch. Um, nobody ever asks me though. So the only purple that asked me were these little girls at, um, at uh, a basketball game one time. So I would show them. I would be so, I'd probably cry if one of my kids actually showed any kind of interest in anything I was interested in. They love basketball, they love football. So all they talk about at dinner is like, we actually went to dinner this week, which was like, we never go to dinner anymore. They just talk about the NFL draft, the NBA draft, uh, I don't know, one of the players. They were talking to our neighbor about their favorite player. I can't even think of the name. He had ACL surgery. I mean, I don't know. That's all they talk about is sports. So sometimes I get um, frustrated because I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about. Stacy said she just finished Cross Stitch University and she's ready to start something new. Heartfelt is super cute. Is that beginner friendly? Yes, that is a great pattern. Love it. Why are there little or no hand dyed 18 count fabric? Um, if there's any 18 count in a specific color that you would like, um, if you email us, we can order it. Um, we tend to stock more of 14 count, 28 count, and um, 16 count because that is what sells best for us um so guys thank you so much for watching make sure you tune in next wednesday we're gonna have a special guest so you're gonna want to be tuned in to see um what she has to offer and um thank you so much for spending your wednesday morning with me and subscribe to our channel like this video and i'll see you next week